Hello everyone and welcome to the second video in Make a Game, a series on making a cool video game in Unity. In the last one we set up a basic scene, installed the tools we are going to be using and I explained a few things about the UI. In this one we are going to talk about components, do a little bit of scripting and therefore get our character or our ball rolling in our scene. So as always, I've opened up Unity. And once I opened it up, after having sa saved my scene and closed down my computer, I was met by a completely blue, blue screen. To fix this, you simply have to double click the level or whatever you saved it as. I saved it as level 1. This is because by default, Unity doesn't always load up the scene you want it to. So just double click that and hit don't save to the current scene. Now we have our level loaded. To save a level or load a level, you could always go up to file, save scene or open scene. Okay, so for now, let's uh, first of all explain what is a game object and what is a component. If you, for example, select our ball, we can see that there is a lot of information over in the inspector panel. The ball is a game object. And everything you see on the ball is properties for that game object. But the properties are sp split up into different sections. These sections are called components. And you can choose whether or not you want an, a, a component to be on a ga game object. It's all up to you. By default, when we create a sphere, it has three basic components. It has the sphere mesh filter. This is what makes it round. It has the sphere collider, which makes it able to collide with other game objects. Then it has the mesh renderer, which will show it in the scene. And it will do that using a material. And by default, that's called default diffuse. So that's what giving it the gray color. The material also defines stuff like transparency and reflectivity. Now let's move on. So that's the basics of components. We want to create a new component, a script, where we can tell the ball that whenever we press certain keys, we need it to get rolling. But first we want it to actually collide and move in physics space. Because right now when we play our game, we can see it's completely still. Even if we go under our scene, select the ball, go to the scene view, hit F to focus on it. And uh, you can see right now I'm in wireframe mode, so we can go up here in the left hand corner of the scene view, switch to textured, which is where you want to be in the most of the time, and move it up. And then hit play. We can see that the ball doesn't fall to the ground. This is because we have to add some physics. This is mostly done using a rigid body. Go to add component. If you don't have this, you have an older version of Unity. Then you can go to the top where it says component. Anyway, go to add component. Go under physics. Select rigid body. Now physics are applied to our ball. We have different pro properties to adjust, which you can always look up if you are unsure on what stuff does. Remember that increasing the mass won't make it fall faster. Now let's hit play. We can now see that our ball drops to the ground. If we also move it over a bit, we will see it roll off the plane. Oops, maybe a little more like this. We can also t take our game view and drag it over so we can all so we can observe the game while it's playing in the scene view also. Let's hit play and the ball rolls off. Now let's take the game view and put it back. Let's also adjust the position of our ball back again on the Z axis needs to be zero and we can drag it down again. Not too low, or else the ball will fall through the cube. So just a tad over, that's perfect. 
If you're experiencing that your ball is falling through the cube no matter what, make sure that both the ball has a sphere collider and that the ground has a box collider attached. If we for example disable the box collider, the sphere will fall right through. Notice that our box here, our ground, is static. It isn't moving. That's because we haven't added a rigid body component. That's something you want for ground things. Okay, so now let's create the script that will make our ball move. To do this, go to Add Component, New Script, and let's call this Ball Control. It, we are going to be using JavaScript in this series, since I think it's the easiest to learn. But you can feel free to follow along in C-sharp or Boo. I recommend JavaScript for beginners. Now let's hit create an ad. Now it's time to load up the script in Mano Develop. So double click it. Normally Unity will open scripts in Mano Develop. Though it's not always installed with Unity, so sometimes you have to do it manually. You can do this by going to monodevelop.com. Here it is. Download it and then select it in Unity. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. You can always choose to use another program, such as Notepad++, which is great for Windows, or Text Wrangler, which is great for Mac. It's really up to you. Most beginners are fine with MonoDevelop. To choose what text editor you want to use, go to Unity, Edit, then Preferences. Under External Tools, you see the External Script Editor. Here you can choose between, between programs. If Unity doesn't recognize it, you can browse and find where you installed it. It's that simple. Okay, so here's the script opened up in MonoDevelop. By default, Unity will include the start function and the update function, along with the pragma strict. The pragma strict can just be ignored. This will make sure that you don't do things that are completely insanely taxing on the computer, or at least some of them. The function start, we can just remove that. That's what's called just when you start the game. So anything you put between these two bracket keys the open and close one will be called just when starting the game. This is where you can do stuff like finding the player or setting up a level. Let's just remove this. Then we have the function update. The function update is called every time the computer draws a frame. Just like movies, computer games are drawn by a series of images. This is called every time one of those images appear. This means that we can put stuff here, such as checking for input and then doing something. For example, movement controls. We can also put stuff like checking if the player has entered a certain region and then doing something based on that. Though that's usually done using stuff like function on trigger, function on collision, and so on. So there are many ways to define when something should happen. For now, let's create something inside the function update. What we're going to be here is simple movement. We're going to be using the built-in physics system in Unity to make our ball rotate and therefore roll off in the direction we want it to. To do this, let's type var rotation of type float equals input dot get axes and of course remember that unity is cap sensitive let me just zoom in on this so you can see more clearly what go what's going on input dot get axes horizontal times rotation speed. This is quite confusing, and I don't expect you to understand everything that's going on here. Basically, 
we are making a variable called rotation. A variable is something that stores uh, something, such as a number or whether something is true or false. It could also store a player or an object. This is the name of the variable. This can be whatever you want. We use this name to reference the, this variable. So variables are basically used in, instead of typing in numbers every time or finding the player all the time, we can do it once and then reference it by name. This is a type float. That means a number with decimals. And it's equal to input.getAxis horizontal. This is something Unity has set up for us to easy, uh, easily make our game respond to A and D keys, such uh, so that we can roll to the right and to the left. This will also work with the arrow keys and it will also scale to consoles. Then we are going to multiply it by the rotation speed. That's another variable we are going to be creating in a second. And that's something we can adjust inside of Unity without even doing any scripting. That's the easiest way to quickly adjust how fast you want the ball to rotate. So let's make that variable. This is done above the function update because we want this to appear inside of Unity. Let's type var space rotation speed. Again, you can call this whatever you want as long as you both change it here and here. This is going to be equal to 100. This is just a lucky guess since I know what kind of number we are looking for. You can easily change this however you want. And if we save this now, it won't be working, but we can see that when we select the ball, which has our script applied, we have a new property called rotation speed, which we can drag on or type a new number into. It's completely up to you how fast you want your ball to be going. Cool. Now let's do more with the rotation. So now a new line below var rotation, we are going to type rotation times equals time dot delta time. We are going to ignore this line for now, just type after me. Basically, we are making sure that our ball will, will rotate and keep on rotating in the same uh, amount, depend, no, uh, not depending on your frame rate. If that was complete, blah blah, please just skip this. Now make a new line, type in rigid body. Because now we are referencing the rigid body where we can do stuff like add forces or add torque. We are going to add relative torque. Torque is like pushing an object to make it rotate. And that's what we want to do. Then open up a parenthesis, type vector 3 dot back space times rotation, close up the parentheses and end it with a semicolon. You might have noticed that all these three lines and also the variable one end with semicolons. All commands does this, so whenever you are making a variable or rotating something or making something another color, every time you do something you end the line with a semicolon. This is very important. Also make sure that the function update has a capital U since many forget this and Unity won't recognize it. Cool. Let me just explain this line. We are telling our rigid body that we want to rotate it. That's what the first part does. Then inside of the parentheses, it asks us how do we want to rotate it. We want to use the vector3.back. We can use the vector3, which basically means 3D coordinates, to do stuff like Vector three dot forward or vector three dot left. If I want to invert it, 
I can simply do times minus one. For now, we'll do dot back since that the axis that's the axis we're going to be working with. Then we multiply it with the rotation, which was the amount we made up here. That's going to make it rotate depending on the rotation speed, the input axis, and the time dot delta time, so it won't be dependent on frame rate. I know this was a lot to take in, and I definitely don't expect you to understand everything. If you do, well, congratulations, you are much quicker than I am. Now hit save. Let's head into Unity and see if it's working. You can go to the console and check for errors. Just ignore the one that was there. We can see right now we don't have any errors. Should you have an error, feel free to write to me. And also, there are always the Unity Answers page with a lot, a lot of nice people willing to help you out. Of course, read the, uh, read the error message and see if you can answer it yourself. Now let's hit, let's hit play. And if we now hold down the D key, we can see the ball rolling off. Let's replay this and we can also roll the other way and we can basically control it however we want. Congratulations, you have now created your first script and uh, made some pretty cool functionality already. This is already a fun game in that you can duplicate the ground and make a lot of these all around to make it hard for the ball to reach a final destination. So feel free to play around with this. In the next video, we are going to be expanding on this to do stuff like jumping and also make it more exciting to look at. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.